how do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this on, I think misuse PCR is not quite... I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. It is. No, they, that, th th there's very little of what they call HIV and what's been brought out here by Phil Pott and, and, and Isai already. The measurement for it is not, is not exact at all. It's not, it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like, if you've got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together, you might think it's an apple. But, and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible and they are, the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is. Um, it's, but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. Yeah.